Hey everybody, welcome to the Lynn Academy channel. Welcome to this Follow Your Passions video. My name is Luann Civic, and I am your host for today because I have the honor of interviewing and allowing our wonderful Bill Schwengel, who is normally our host, to share about his passions today. If this is the first time you're joining us here, welcome. And a little bit about the Lynn Academy. It is a, a school, a series of different certifications that was created around the certifications that Denise Lynn has created throughout her life. Um, if you are not familiar with Denise Lynn, well, you need to Google her right now. Um, she is one of the, I'll say the top visionaries out there in the realm of, of things like feng shui, space clearing, gateway dreaming, past lives. And she's had a phenomenal life. And she's still around. She's still creating wonderful things. Um, but she has been, since the age of 20, helping people understand more about health, healing, their environment, and themselves. And so the Lynn Academy holds the certifications of feng shui, space clearing, gateway dreaming, um, oracle card reading, probably any one of those wonderful methods that you might be on the path of discovering of how to make your life better and richer. So these passion videos have been here that Bill created this series for us to interview our different um, beautiful practitioners on what is their passion, how it maybe ties into why they studied what they've studied here. And I'm excited to have Bill join us today to share about his passions. Now he has been involved in the Lynn Academy for many, many, many years. And we won't talk how many it is because it makes us sound old, Thank but you. he has been a, an interior alignment, um, feng shui and space clearing practitioner, and now a master teacher and has been a master teacher for quite a while and is also a soul coaching practitioner, as well as many other of the Lynn Academy certification and graduate. He has been a behind the scenes mentor in the elemental space clearing program. Um, and I know that space clearing is one of his passions. Mm. So I don't know that that's what he's talking about today. <laughs> I think he's going to weave a lot of things into today. So Bill, thank you so much for being here and sharing your passion with us today. Absolutely. I, I love, I, I love to be able to do that. Um, and I've been doing um, it for quite some time where I've been able to bring my passions into, let's just say, a less than what you might think of spiritual or new age environment. So just to give everyone a little bit experience, a little more information about me, I am based just outside of Chicago. And um, when I first um, read a book by Denise Lynn called Sacred Space, it really did, it blew my mind. Because when I when I started going through those pages and seeing things that she was, the words that she was using, the concepts she was bringing were all things that innately, I'm like, wait a minute, this is what I believe. This is, this is a part of who I am. And it was the first time I had ever read anything or met, met uh, anyone who, who, were, who used these kind of concepts in a way that's like, yeah, this is just the way the world is. And so that was many years ago. I think that book came out in 95. Um, but before that, you know, growing up, I was um, one of those kids who uh, loved playing in nature, who loved um, pretending. And I loved pretending to be animals, right? That was one of my play things was like, how do I, how do I connect with nature? Because there were so many cool things out there. And I'd often pretend to be a black panther or, you know, because they were powerful and mysterious. Um, I would pretend to be a raccoon because they were mischievous and they could do great things with their hands and they were just fun, right? They were um, just kind of a fun little animal. Um, and so fortunately, I had friends who would uh, play those games with me where we'd just be these creatures in nature. And it just felt to me like that was a way to connect, um, connect in a powerful way to kind of the world around us. Because when I was growing up, I didn't really have 
a, a specific direction on belief, right? The way that I grew up, it was, well, there are things you do and don't do. The things you don't do is you don't lie, you don't cheat and you don't steal. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of people out there who think about this um, kind of more structured religious and kind of God in the sky thing, but that just wasn't part of my upbringing. Um, but it was much more these guidelines. And um, for me, that worked really well for a while where that was enough. But then I got to this point where I realized, well, there's something, there's something more. There's something more out there. Uh, look at nature. How can there not be something more? Look at how this you know, beautiful thing grows around us and look at how it interacts with the world around it. Um, and it was just one of those things where I, I just felt, you know, I need to know more. I just feel like there's something more out there. So I did my own kind of digging and investigating and researching. And I, you know, I, I looked up things like the Ouija board, right? I'm like, oh, well, that's an interesting thing. And I played with that a little bit. And I thought, mm, maybe not for me. But then I um, looked into tarot cards and I thought, oh, this is interesting. I love the idea of symbolism and the idea of symbols really helping us to better understand our world and kind of what it is that we are doing moving forward. Then I did a little dabbing in palmistry and and really just started to expand my awareness and understanding of the world of those things that we can't see, right? Those things that are um, uh, so-called, I guess, new age, but also the things that, you know, the mystics have been talking about for centuries, right? It's, it's an understanding that we have of our world that doesn't come initially from science, although science has now proven a lot of those things to be true, it came from this innate feeling, this innate sense that there's more, there's something um, powerful out there that we are able to connect with in a way that helps us to grow, right? It's all about our journey. It's all about that, that voyage that we take in this life, right? And so, you know, um, when, I, when I read that book, Sacred Space, it started me on a new journey where I then reached out. I'm like, I have got to meet Denise Lynn because I looked her up and I said, oh, it looks like she has some classes on feng shui. I'm like, oh, that's fascinating. You know, I, I've read some things on feng shui. I've taken some classes on feng shui. I would love to be able to learn from her, from her perspective. So I reached out and at that time she was living in London or somewhere in Europe and doing classes out there. And, you know, I got a nice letter back that just said, you know what, right now we're not in the States. We don't have any classes in the States, but, you know, we'll keep you in mind. You know, and when you hear that, you're like, okay, sure. That, you know, I'll never hear from this person again. So I continue to take classes on feng shui because it really did resonate with me that the environment around us makes a difference of how we feel and how we start our day and how we kind of can uh, kind of rejuvenate right ourselves and and I, I would think back to when I was you know six or seven and then even through my early early teens every six months or so I'd be like my room it's just there's something that needs to shift in it I've got to move this here I've got to move I mean my bed needs to move I just always felt over a certain amount of time that something needed to shift because I felt like it just didn't feel right anymore and maybe it was too because as a kid like since I was about five years old I would go traveling to the East Coast uh, to visit my dad. And um, it was such a different experience there. So my dad um, and my stepmom, they are teachers in this private school with these in this beautiful grounds, rolling hills, think New England beauty, right? The leaves, the trees, the, all of that. Um, and it was such a beautiful kind of place. And there they were dorm heads. And so um, they had this beautiful first floor um, uh, with big windows that you could see out across these hills. And, um, you know, it's just a, a beautiful experience. And so I would about three or four months of the year spend time there and I had my own room and it was just a little, you know, it, it was, it was, it was a little dorm like, but it was also something that I could personalize and the space and the energy and the environment was amazing. Take me back to Chicago suburbs, not so many rolling hills, right? It's a very different energy, a very different experience. And you know, I grew up in a lot of different suburbs. Um, we moved a lot when I was a kid. And um, so it was, you know, there was a lot of kind of consistency in that environment because a lot of the suburbs were the same, right? Um, the homes, we had apartments, we had uh, a house, we had a townhouse, those sorts of things. Um, but all of this is to say that there was kind of this, despite the kind of stability that I felt that I had, no matter where I was, there was this constant kind of changing happening. And so I needed to kind of understand that and really look at my life in a way that's okay. So 
something is changing here. I'm just going to roll with it. And the way that I'm going to help myself to roll with it is to shift my environment. What can I do in my space to make it either something that is um, always welcoming to me or something that is always kind of helping me to better understand myself, to better feel kind of authentic, if you will. Um, so all of that kind of fed into this idea of feng shui and how the environment around us really helps us. So back to taking more classes. I actually met a, a woman who was based in Milwaukee and Chicago. She had kind of two locations and she was going to do this extensive feng shui program and I was getting ready to, to sign up for it. And then suddenly I got a card in the mail and that card was from Denise. She said, hey, I'm in the States and I've got the class coming up. Are you interested? And I jumped at the opportunity. And this, this is where I think Luann and I first kind of almost met uh, because I took the um, interior alignment course the week after she did. And so, um, you know, it was, it was an amazing experience and it opened my eyes in so many ways. And honestly, as a part of that course, it's when I really became passionate about space clearing. So for those who aren't, aren't aware of space clearing, space clearing is really working directly with the energy of a home to shift it, to align with our intentions. So it's it's really a, a ceremony, a kind of a ritual that you go through to bless a space. And the way that you do that is you focus on your client's intention. What is it they're really looking to create in their space? What is the energy they want to create? And you use various tools um, in order to kind of reinforce that. But ultimately you're, you're a channel for the energy to help to shift that. Um, and that channel is driven by the intention that you have for that overall clearing. And it's a, it's a beautiful kind of experience and a beautiful way in which to connect with a home, but also really help people to shift when they've gone through, you know, some, some things in life that, you know, we all go through. It could be losing a job. It could be getting married. It could be getting divorced. It could be going through an illness and kind of letting that go. So a lot of it is about kind of releasing energy that no longer serves you in your current space, in your current life, um, and bringing in the energy that you want. Um, and it's such a powerful way for people to really make positive change in their lives. And it was one, it's just one of those things that um, as Lynn mentioned, I've always been really passionate about, but that's where it first became real to me, this idea of kind of working with the energy of a space, bringing nature, bringing spirit, bringing all these aspects together. And so, you know, as I look back and think about, well, what are all the things in my life, in my journey, where are they leading me? And one of the things I've come to realize is it's about bringing together those aspects of life, those kind of linear aspects where you're living your day to day and your kind of more spiritual and kind of soul to self. And so what I've tried to do now that I am kind of where I am in this world, and I'll get to that in a minute, is kind of bring worlds together so that people are able to feel confident and comfortable connecting on a deeper level with their own kind of guidance so that they can um, move forward in life in a balanced way. I've always been about balance. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that too. So I uh, I'm, I'm in the corporate world and I've been in the corporate world for quite some time since 97, I think it is. Um, so I've been doing this, I've been in marketing and I've been in operations, so project management. So doing a lot of the very detailed focused linear things that you need to do in order to get things done. And so you wouldn't really think necessarily that this very kind of uh, left-brained uh, thinking would be a good match for this right-brained connecting with spirit, calling on ancestors, calling on your guides to help to kind of bring energy into a space. But what I've come to realize is that they don't have to be separate. You can bring these worlds together. Um, and it took me a really long time to realize that in the corporate space, that it is something that people are open to. And so part of that is because, believe it or not, we are all human beings. Yes, I know it's hard to believe sometimes, even in the corporate world, we're all human beings. And it's important to realize that we, you know, the corporate world can only kind of fill us to a certain level, right? If you think of our lives as a glass of water, you know, how much of that water is filled through work and how much of that water is filled through connection to the family and friends, the experiences that you have in the world, whether it's traveling, whether it is, um, you know, just falling in love, whether it is um, just connecting on a deep, deep level to something that is so important to you, right? So 
that business aspect of ourselves, while it's really important on a practical level for us to be able to take that and say, you know, pay our bills and pay our mortgage and, and do all the things that we need to do, whether it's supporting our family, whatever it might be, it doesn't fill the glass, right? Um, and I found that some people are able to say, you know what, I can fill the glass with my work because I love my work. And I would suggest, I would say, fantastic, that's great. But I would also suggest that the reason you love the work is because it fills you on a, on a deeper level, right? It's not just about the work itself. It's about the purpose that you found. It is about the um, uh, the work that you see making a difference, right? I think that that is so important today for us to recognize that there is a difference that we can make. And you know, if you're able to do that and, and work, fantastic. And if that fills you spiritually, that's fantastic as well. And that is the ideal. And I think that there's a way to bring those worlds together by bringing your spiritual self and your, let's just say, muggle self, if you will, mundane self, your day-to-day -day self um, together. And so the way that I've done that over the years is I've been able to have um, my connections with people in the corporate world around feng shui, explaining kind of what it is and the power that it can have for them. You do say lunch and learns. You have, um, you, you, you take the opportunity to speak to people openly about kind of what feng shui is and, and what it can really do. And, and over the years, people have become much more kind of open and interested and excited about feng shui. You know, the same can be said for space clearing. I have done space clearings for multiple businesses that I worked for. I've been, you know, I, I was um, in, in different offices as well. So whether in Chicago, whether in, in, in Toronto, whether in, you know, other um, areas across the U.S., I've been able to do these clearings. And I'll do a clearing for an entire office. I'll do a clearing for individual spaces. Um, so, you know, it gives me that opportunity to do that as well. And people are much more open to it. And there are some people who are, not as comfortable talking about it, but once you take that step to start talking about it, it opens the door for others, right? It opens the door for them to say, you know what, that's really fascinating. And, you know, I kind of think something about this that, that really resonates with me, or, you know what, I, I, I was raised one way and, and this is really that kind of connects with me in that way and, and really reinforces my current beliefs, right? So it's opening the door for people to be authentic. Um, which I think is such a powerful, powerful thing. And so by bringing my passions to the workplace, so as I said, feng shui, I've done classes on feng shui. I've done um, space clearings for folks. I've done um, guided meditation. So one of the things that's really powerful about some of the work that, that Denise has done in the Lynn Academy is this ability to help people guide them to listen, listen to their own inner wisdom. So in interior alignment, synchro alignments. We also do in soul coaching, we do soul journeys. And so bringing these kind of aspects into the corporate environment, I was able to do over COVID time, uh, uh, an online um, guided meditation for over 300 people. Um, and people really resonated with it. I had people afterwards saying, you know what, until I did that, I didn't realize how, how effective, how helpful that can be. And I've started incorporating meditation into my daily life, right? So helping to bring those worlds together. You know, I've also done Reiki in the working space, right? You can work with your um, uh, HR group, uh, your people team. They like to have, say, monthly mental health um, kind of uh, classes and things every year, right? They might do that once a year. They have a whole month dedicated to mental mental wellness, um, or just health and wellness. So there's opportunity there too, to bring these things in um, where people are one, I think thirsty for these kinds of things, right? They're really looking for ways in which that they can um, expand, right? They, they make, their, make their work life feel more purposeful um, and connecting with their own kind of inner guidance or their, their the, that kind of nagging kind of feeling or voice in the back of the head or just their gut, right? So all of these things, when you're able to bring these together, when I'm able to bring these together, I feel like it's opening a door for people to feel more comfortable and more confident and speaking to those aspects of their lives that you wouldn't typically see in kind of the corporate world. So it really is about the sense of balance. And there's so many ways in which you can find balance. You know, with the Lynn Academy, um, programs. You know, I've taken um, uh, the interior alignment with Denise. I've taken advanced interior alignment with Luann, which was a beautiful course. Uh, and I've also done um, 
soul coaching with another uh, great friend of ours, Terry Bowen. Um, and you know, there and I've I've worked with so many members of this community, and everyone has and their own passion. They've all been able to incorporate their passions in different ways. And so, you know, my advice to anyone who is like, well, what is my passion? I don't even know. <laughs> well, that's a good question. Start there. Um, you know, and you can do it in a way that feels authentic to you, right? There's some people who, who when they think about feng shui, space, energy, when they think about guides and angels and, and, and those sorts of things, they think, oh, that's, that's beyond me, right? That's not something I'm comfortable even going, but you don't have to do that, right? You can start with, you know what? Um, I am just going to start with what works for me. I'm going to, and, and this is something that I've done recently, so I'll share you as an, an example, um, where I have said, okay, well, I am a linear thinker. I am organized. I'm a project manager. And so I, as a project manager, I work in timelines all the time, right? And so what I've done is I've started to use that as a, as a guide over the course of a short period of time to say, okay, over the course of the next, say, two weeks or so, what's all the things that are happening in my life? Just kind of create a little timeline that says, okay, this, these are the things that I'm focused on. It can be the things that you're excited about. It can be see, be some of the mundane things. So, for instance, visiting my daughter in Kansas City, or um, you know, uh, going out to dinner with some friends, or uh, you know, I've got a, a big meeting coming in at at work that I need to prepare for, or you know, at whatever it is, just mark those down on the calendar. And then this is where the I think the fun comes in. Um, although I know some people enjoy timelines, I don't want to knock project managers. I know it's part of our passion. It's okay. Um, but um, when we think about um, kind of, well, how can we then bring in our right side uh, of our brain? Well, one way is oracle cards. And for those who are not familiar with oracle cards, um, they're different from tarot cards. They are tools that we can use that um, are, are really helping to guide us um, through uh, beautiful kind of messaging, whether it is through the, the pictures, the words, um, and they are, they can be say gentler than say tarot cards. Tarot cards, I think, are you know a valuable tool set, um, and and but I do think that um, oracle cards, especially if you're just getting interested in kind of the spiritual aspects of things, are a powerful way for you to kind of connect on a gent in a gentler way with what your soul is trying to tell you. Ultimately, whether it's tarot cards or oracle cards, and, and honestly, I don't do tarot cards anymore because oracle cards are just a, another passion of mine. I have several decks that Denise has, has done. I do a daily draw in my Facebook page because it's just something that I think is really powerful for people. Um, but the oracle cards are a way for um, us to just put out a simple question and ask and see what comes and trust that what comes is something that um, is for your best, right? Is, is in essence, your guides, your angels, your soul, or your gut, um, just saying, hey, you know, pay attention to this, see what, see what comes. Um, and so let me just show you a little bit here um, as an example. I've been doing this for a few weeks now or so, and it's gonna look pretty messy because what I do, can you see this sort of? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what this is, is a big old piece of uh, construction paper. And what I've done, as you can see, is I've got a timeline here. It's very simple. And then I've got three cards that I draw. And those are copies of them, not the actual cards. And with each card, I ask, what should my focus be? What, um, you know, how can I support my own journey? And then ultimately, what are the gifts I want to tap into to make a difference? And throughout that time, over that time period, I use those responses in the oracle cards as a guide for the over that period to say okay I'm, I'm falling off kind of my 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 path here if you will my intent was x right so define what my intent is these are the cards that are helping me to stay true to that intent and help to achieve that intent and so it allows me to kind of step back and go oh, okay right i'm really frustrated right now at work about something but if i take a step back and look at these cards okay i can approach this in a way that will kind of reduce my stress and help me to move forward through it and then i just pay attention to the signs and signs are another powerful thing that Le that that denise lynn shares with us across her courses right signs are a powerful way for us to listen 
And so signs can be anywhere from say numerology, for those who don't know, there's, there's energy in numbers. And by working with those numbers, you can kind of understand what the energy or what the message is in those. There's also nature as, as a way to bring in signs. There's also music. Um, there are all different kinds of ways to kind of identify signs. And so what I did is I documented or I wrote down each of those signs and what they meant. And then at the end of this whole period, I look at it and go, wow, look, look what has happened. Look at, look at the message I've been receiving and how do I feel now compared to how I felt when I started. And it's been really helpful to me to bring those things together, the linear and the um, spiritual, right, the left and the right brain, as a way to say, okay, I'm able to go, live my day to day and also bring in this aspect that I believe in this passion that I have for connecting with spirit um, in, in, in such a powerful way. And it's a way of what I've done is I've brought in things like from, from soul coaching. So soul coaching, one of the exercises there that you go through, if you go through that program is a timeline that you can create that kind of can address uh, any number of things, whether it's kind of looking through, looking at your life or whether it is, and I'm trying to identify where you, where you want to go or, you know, so many different ways that you can, you can do that. And, and, and I love the ways in which we can do it. It's not all just a straight line. Um, but so bringing in some of that soul coaching, right? Bringing in the Oracle card, which are also part of soul coaching, but there's a whole Oracle card program that the, the Linden Park Academy program brings and always keeping in mind, what is my environment right now? How do I feel in the space where I am like just this week. I'm like, you know what? I'm feeling a little cramped. I would like to make more progress in my, in, in just in my kind of abundance. And so I expanded my desk space. So I pushed it out. So I wasn't feeling so cramped. Right. So that's those kinds of things and those kinds of reminders and those kinds of insights and tips that are so powerful. When you bring them all together with the fact that, you know what? I have bills to pay. You know what? I have to go to work every day for X, Y, Z. And you know what? There are people that I work with that I love. The work isn't always the thing that I love, but I know that it has an end purpose. And so it just allows me to have that as a guide, if you will, throughout my day to day so that I too can find my balance in a way that resonates with me by bringing those worlds together. So I guess that's where my, that, that's, that's where my passion is right now. Um, in bringing all those worlds together. Um, and I guess my advice for anyone out there going, wow, that's, that, I don't know all that stuff, right? I don't, I don't know feng shui, I don't know space clearing, I don't know oracle cards, et cetera. Start with what you feel is right. What are your beliefs, right? What is your, you know, what are you dealing with day to day? Do, a, do an assessment of kind of where you are in your life across various aspects whether it's work or your love life or kind of creativity or whatever the aspects of your life that are important to you and just do an assessment and say, okay, this is where I am. But then step back and say, okay, so that's where I am, where do I want to be? And maybe it's the same place, but if it's not, then okay. If, if, if I want to be in this other space in my creativity, for example, what are the things that I can do that bring together kind of who I am and help to drive me and direct me in that way? Um, to get there. And there's so many different ways that you can do that. Um, and I would say, you know, trust yourself because um, that's really at the core of everything that we do with the Academy. It is listening to kind of what your own inner guidance has, has for you because within you, you know, that's often something we say um, because the soul loves the truth and it, you'll know, you'll, you'll, you'll feel it within your, your whole body will kind of start to resonate with, oh, this is, this is it, this is my thing. And you know what, it's, it might change and that's okay, right? Just allow yourself, just like, just like in nature, everything changes season to season, year to year. You know, it's, it's okay to be where you are and it's okay not to be there in another three months, another six months, right? Cause we're all growing and learning and, um, it's such a, an amazing, amazing journey. And it's hard. It's so hard sometimes, but at the end of it, it makes sense, right? You're like, oh, that's why I went through that little bump in the road. And the way that I got there, I was like, oh, okay. I, I realized that on the surface, I can see the logical reason for that happening. 
But then underneath that surface within me, I'm like, oh, but the reason why I feel this way is because, oh, that was tied to something that uh, I no longer need, right? That's something I was ready to release and ready to let go of. So there's just be open to both sides. Find the ways that you can connect the dots um, to both of them. And because there's so many tools out there to help you. And, um, you know, uh, I'll say this again and again, but the Lynn Academy is a beautiful way to do that. There's so many ways. Um, so I, I hope, I hope that that's, um, that's something that you'll consider and delve a little bit deeper into and scratch the surface a little bit more because it's, it's in you. You've got some amazing, amazing things within you. It's just allow yourself to listen to yourself. Oh my God, Bill. Thank you so mm. much. You're so welcome. <clears throat> you know, as you kept talking about left brain, right brain, and how, and balance, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, we were born with both of those hemispheres in our brain. They're mm. both valuable. And I don't know how we got on the track of only logic is good because both of those aspects um, are so important. And I think you are so inspirational. Mm. And this is why. I think there's a lot of people that go, well, I, I want to be a spiritual person, but that means I would need to give up all of the things of regular life and go live on the top of a mountain and <clears throat> in order to be spiritual. And no, mm. you don't, right? Mm -hmm. I love what you do in that you bring your spiritual, intuitive, loving self into the workplace mm -hmm. and you marry those two things together and it has to inspire all of those people around you to think, you know what, there is another way to do some of this. Yes. I mean, heck, if everybody quit working in corporations or big business, we would be back to the stone age. So we need, <laughs> we need those things and we need people there but you are this i'll call it the next generation of enlightened mm. corporate people right that bring understanding that we can listen to signs and symbols we can listen to what feels with good within our own heart and <clears throat> and do the mission do the company mission do mm -hmm. get the project done right uh -huh. stay on task with our timeline but bring in the messages from signs and symbols mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing that with everybody thank you. what do you have coming up if people want to connect with you more well if people want to connect with me more there are a couple places they can go one if you want to see my daily oracle card draws i'm on facebook just under my name bill schwingle um you can also find me i have a feng shui-24 website so www.fengshui-24.com um, and that will show you various classes and things that I have come up and certifications um, as well. So you can check that out also. I also have um, a um, Feng Shui uh, 24 Facebook page and Instagram. One of the things I'm excited about right now that I'm working on is a class in September, right around the corner, where I'm working with people to call spirit out loud, right? So again, this is bringing in the left and the right brain where so many times when we do sacred work, we do rituals of things, whether it's healing or space cleanse, whichever, we're not as comfortable kind of sharing and calling out to spirit um, out loud, right? So we'll often have it inside, right? We'll be saying in our head and it's still very powerful, but we want to be able to bring kind of others into the experience. Um, and so in my years in corporate, doing presentations for years and years and years. And also I've done some uh, presentations at conferences. I have done blessings that are at a part of um, kind of mind, body, spirits uh, sessions. Um, so I've had a lot of experience in speaking publicly, but also working in ceremonial spaces so that we're able to call into spirit, call spirit to us to serve the intention of whatever the ceremony is. And so I'm bringing those two together. So I'm, I'm hoping that people will be able to, to join me there. It's a limited size. I want to keep it kind of an intimate space. And if you sign up now, there's a special kind of early bird price uh, until the 14th of August. So feel free to check that out on my website as well. Um, and then also I, I try to um, uh, share that out. Also those events on my Facebook page also. So follow me there. So thank you, Claire. Thank you so much for, for this opportunity. It's been a great time. And I love, as you know, talking about our passions.
about our passions. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bill. You're an inspiration. Oh, thank you. And everybody, if you have ever felt like it's hard to speak out loud and call in, call in spirit or express your desires or make speak in a way that feels sacred enough to do that. Sign up for Bill's class because it will be amazing. Thank you. Mike.